Morning, Happy. How you doing? Is that good? You like those bones? So we're making our own little tool here. We could plant the torch out the back section. That's of what it. I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I set it up. Because this was leaking hydraulic fluid out around it, and we need a better way of tightening this nut down. Probably some RTV and silicon in there, too. Need a hand or anything? I think I'm all set for now. It's always good on the first day to wedge a new crew into the <laughs> tightest spot you can find. And this is Andrew Grasberger. So we custom made a crow's foot tool to get around that fitting down there. Yeah, there we go. Is that exciting? You liked that, didn't you? I did. That looks good. Alright, let me try moving it. Wow, it'll work. I'll go the other way. Oh, come on, baby. That's going one way, but not the other. It's centered right now. Centered, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, tell him to move them. There they go. Yeah, that's nice. Tell him to try and bring them back the other way. I know it's slow, but it's pride. Yeah, they're moving. So we need to do something with the oil galley. That is moving. It's not like it has to do that fast. We're not gonna, you know, wag our tail through the water. First, the first time right yeah, here, it's, it's yeah. Like it was just a, yeah, it's cool when you go when you come. About right here, and I got an edge bumper. Yeah, I think I can widen out the oil gland on it. There's people where? There's a person. Oh, info! Take one! Info! Shoot! Info! She's a late reader! Holy moly! Hi, I'm Doug, and behind me is Sailing Vessel Seeker, the boat the internet built from scratch right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Over the past 10 years, hundreds of people have gone through this gate to tour the boat. We've done that on any day of the week, pretty much, especially Saturdays. From now on, we got about four more Saturdays that will open the gates for you. We will not do that during the week, even if you're as excited as Heather. Look, poor loser, read a little bit sooner. We can't answer the door right now. Cool boat, I just wanted to play on it or visit it or something. We love that level of excitement and enthusiasm, especially if it's not chemically induced. Come on by to our VIP launch party August 21st at the Tulsa Port of Catoosa. You gotta buy a ticket, it's $150, and we're not making a dime off that thing. That $150 goes to a restrooms and lights and power and water and a beautiful meal and a band. All of these things, it's gonna be a fantastic evening for us. If you're looking for an economical option, then put September 11th on your calendar. We will be at Three Forks Harbor in Muskogee, Oklahoma. The boat will be sitting in the water there. You'll be welcome aboard for two bucks. A buccaneer because it's a pirate festival. We'll have pirates, a band to play. We'll have food and a drink available for your purchase, and it will be a great time. So come to one of those two events and celebrate with us. It's all about making stuff ourselves, building things out of steel, fabrication, all the industry involved in that the DIY spirit and marrying my boat to the water see you then we are going to get this hundred stead working 100% today because we kind of need the propeller to move down the river and this is Justin Romero from Winnie Texas that's right this is the hundred stead variable pitch control unit go ahead and pull that top off let's see inside there we've taken the bolts off our lever here connects to a controller up in the pilot house and it moves that brass fitting let me show you this back and forth just a little bit and when it moves it puts oil into one gland or the other which moves the whole thing well let's just show you if this goes wrong just say stop 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 It's not supposed to be in gear. Well, how to get in gear? Huh? How to get in gear? I think it was, and the transmission just got enough fluid oh, to start spinning. Okay. So let me go check it out. But it was fun to see. Yes. Put that into neutral. Okay, now it's in neutral. Uh, did you see how beautifully that prop moved in that direction, though? Well, that was the one direction that it works, right? Yes, that's the, the direction it works. Direction it's the other direction, direction that's the problem. Works. Let's start it up and try it the other way. 
see it change a little bit on the flow. I'm going to go out there and turn the blade itself. Yeah. Okay, so all the way back on the hunter stead is feathered on the props. In other words, for sailing, see, we're not catching a lot of drag as we sail the boat forward. That was what we call feathered. On an airplane, these would be flat so that it spins and it doesn't push air. What we're doing is we're taking that brass piece out of there. That's the part with the grooves in it that we need to check and probably modify. So here's the way that thing works. That brass piece is this right here. There's a hose that comes into that brass piece and it has three grooves cut through it. So there's one, two, and three. And the oil flows through this center groove. The coupler that it's riding on has two grooves cut through it and it's a little raised up spot right there. So when the oil comes in, it goes into this blank spot, goes nowhere. But if you shift it this way a little bit, oil goes into this groove. And when it's in this groove, it travels around the ring, right? There's a channel that runs back to the piston. And this is the outside of the cylinder that the piston's in. So when the oil goes back through here, it pushes the whole mechanism this way. The ring collar and all of that chunk and the shaft on the inside of it that's threaded in goes rearward. That's what engages with the base of the propeller blade and makes the blade turn. And at the same time, while that oil is going back to one side of that piston, oil is coming off the other side and it's coming back through here. And since this is shifted in this direction, this and this line up and so it's dumping its oil back out. So what it's not doing is when we shove this piece this direction, I see that little gap right there, we just push it that much. It should put this oil into here. That's not happening because it's not wanting to move back the other direction so we're going to take it apart and see what's going on right in here so that's the shaft that has the handle that is engaged to it and what he's doing is disengaging that handle from the brass part how the middle groove on the collar yeah that's the oil out from the hose right so say when you when you turn the lever it's supposed to this groove is supposed to line up completely with the groove in the shaft well, Makes sense. yeah, and so it seems like it's not lining up with it. It's not even, it's barely getting over the edge at all. On that makes either sense, direction. on either direction. Right. But that's then, okay, it's working fine in one direction. So that direction is getting more oil than the other direction. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is we gotta cut some off of this side of the brass piece so that it can come further over. Or you, you might have to widen your grooves. On mm -hmm. Why would I want to put it up and do that? That is a pain in the ass. I bet it is. But as I as I move it this other direction, the bleed off groove is also barely getting over into the, which might solve your problem if you just shave off these. So both sides. Both sides. Yeah. Give it more so that's the easier solution. So let's try and do right. the the shaving solution. Right. I think we got to take it apart and measure yeah, what those measure grooves are in the brass. Yeah. So that's the shim. Now imagine doing all this in 20 foot seas. Yeah, you don't. You just suffer. Pack it away, sail, and uh, wait for a better weather. Oh, 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 I figured out the puzzle. Rotate it. There you can see those three grooves. Justin here had a brilliant idea. We put half of the oil distribution ring on there, and we can see how its grooves line up with the muff coupler grooves. The muff coupler is the inside one. We think the problem is that hole right there is getting covered up too much here. This one over here, yeah, we need, it's not quite covered up as much because it's working in one direction but not the other. There's no harm in doing this. We decided there's no harm in making that groove and that groove wider toward the outside. So that's what we're going to do. And Justin this morning ran down to Wholesale Tools here in Tulsa, Oklahoma and bought us one of these things. It's a T-slot cutter. They are not cheap. It's like 170 bucks. It's got, uh, but it's like a little saw blade and it lets a mill do the work of a lathe. But we're going to run it in here and cut those two grooves just a little wider. So Justin here is getting a crash course in Tormach and a radial indicator because we've got to find center of this puppy first so we know zero zero so we can cut through the sides of something we've spent hundreds of hours building to this point. Did I stress that hard enough for you? Hundreds of hours. Hundreds of hours. 
Okay, we're happy with that. The little ticking is when it goes across the joint there. I just canceled. That's the only button I knew what to push. <laughs> Something goes wrong, push escape. You want me to slow the velocity down? Yeah. It's it's deep enough. It's pretty deep. It's it's over. So halfway. the deal is it didn't go all the way. So it's got a little stair step, but it's going to either work or not work with that. I think it's going to work. I had good feeling about this because if it doesn't work, then then I'm fired. Well, right. we got to go back to square one. Dock my pay. We don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. take it out of your pay. Hundestet. I'm told it means the uh, place of the hound. Only good one brush. Okay, we made our own little tool here. It's just a hose clamp with a hole drilled through it. So it wraps around the shaft and there's three holes. So we covered up two of them with this and we inject air through that other hole. And we confirmed our suspicions that the oil passes through that. And we know now that it goes down to the internal shaft and just out the back of that. Right. That's why we see oil bubbling up there. And the, they, the air blew through them easily? Pretty well, easily, yeah. Even when I cranked it up. Hmm, okay. We gotta spin the blade uh, to unthread that coupler there. Here? Yeah. Uh, All I gotta do is go back there and turn the blade. Spin the blade or rotate the blade? Rotate. Is there a difference to you engineers? Sometimes. I'm gonna I'm gonna revolve the blades about the axis of, of the, the shaft. shaft. That you happy with that description? Yes. Okay. Why is it not working? Because you got a camera on me. Oh, that's it. Who knows? We will find this. Mystery of the hunter's dead. Discover this. To get this off, we can back it away and see if those holes come through to here. Uh, uh, I think if you, there's a problem, we think it's going to probably be in the, uh, in the can cylinder. Can the cylinder move back without... Yeah, I can move it by hand. That just seems like it should move. Even with air, could it have possibly blown an O-ring? It feels like the same pressure both directions. You know what? That's very probable because I think that's why oil comes out so vigorously here. There it is. Okay. So I made this thing about eight years ago. It's got two halves and they come in behind this bearing and split it off. Pretty much how I remember coming off last time. I think it moves. Something went. Did it pop? Oh, it's off. Yeah. It came all the way up. That, that one shot. decided to go at once. That was exciting. I don't know about y'all, but I felt a concussion. Let's do it again. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing has told us why it only works in one direction. How does oil get to these damn things? That's what I want to know. Isn't too. that weird? Yeah. yeah. Let's just blow this mirror in. Yeah. Isn't it just a bolt? Right there. So look, this ring gear is pressed onto this. Look. And I, I feel it, feel like I feel it coming out through there. I think it is too. Which, Dude. that is a bad thing. You don't want it to come out there because then it's just valving on its own. You want it to valve through the valve plate through the piston. Oh, you are onto something. So yeah. So what I, this is what I think. Somebody took that apart because I did not take this off. You, well, we're well, gonna have to heat that. That's a, the interference fit. It's not a press fit, it's so an it's interference fit. leaking here? It's That's what it felt around. like. At least. Pop that O-ring off, let's, let's see if there's anything in there. put some soapy water on there. Yeah, right? there you go. Yeah. Your soapy water, man. Get on it, get on the soapy water, man. Where's it coming from? 
less water. Okay. I feel it. I can feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to knock that out. Yeah. The that ring. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. There's a bigger gap there now. Oh, there it Ooh. goes. That's it. That. Yeah. It dropped out. So there's the That's holes. That's strange. I don't think those holes are supposed to have oil going through them. I bet you it was supposed to have bolts on that side too. This is how it sits in the hunter stand, right? Oh. And the oil's just dumping you're out. You're right. It doesn't have put, bolts. We put it. one, two, three, four, five, six bolts in it. The bastard that worked. put it back together in front of me at the shop or wherever you bought it at. Yeah, because it was stripped of the parts. He didn't know six bolts. He went didn't in put there. six bolts back in it. If we fire we, it up and we see oil pump out of it. We, we go, oh, we that's think, supposed oh, to happen. return. Yeah, it's not. All the oil's supposed to be going back. If all that return you oil earned you, I degree. told you we'd fix it. Uh, I told him once we figured it out, once we understood it, some, we would say there's some good sleep coming tonight. I told you. That's why I wanted to come out here and do it. I knew we were close. I know. I know. You may not understand that at home, but you got to understand the feeling that we have right now is like. It's some, like we just launched the boat. It's like some junky high, you know, like like what's We're her name? Sugar high. Heather. Yeah, like Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly! Let's pour. Let's read a little bit sooner. So six bolts. All that work for, for six. six. So we didn't even. All we had to do was pop the cover off and go. And I, I swear, <laughs> there, there were not bolts in this when I got it. Yeah, we made it better. Yeah, I think we improved it even. I yeah. agree with you. You're going to have lightning fast pitch reflexes on that boat. Yeah. You'll be able to throw that. We'll just, we just, <laughs> we just paddle through the water. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a worm through wood. Yeah. It's like a wood worm. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah, see, it's, it's got a well done in there. That was a repair, but it's still <laughs> almost a half inch deep. Oh, man. It goes in here, too. Yeah. It's probably where they pour. Yeah, look at, look at these here. There's little porous holes all along there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to walk through all the parts because this is my form of documentation. So it's laid out here on the table where that is the propeller and that is the engine end. And the variable pitch part of the propeller has a threaded rod that runs down the drive shaft. So there's two shafts that spin. This one moves in and out and that's the whole purpose of this unit here is to make this move in and out that pitches the propeller blades so that internal shaft in the drive shaft threads into this part right there and notice that big pinhole and the o-ring the o-ring keeps the oil inside of the box there so that goes in like that and that hole ends up in this slot over here and the o-ring will seal into there now the drive shaft itself has a big muff coupler that goes over it and this is the key that goes into this section of it and it grabs onto the outside of the drive shaft okay so there we're connected to the drive shaft these three pieces will end up with this collar here it's not threaded it's just pressed on there so don't try to unthread it just bang that thing off there it's just a spacer for the bearing and the bearing sits right here on this surface and here's an important part these threads and that are reverse threaded so the rear is reversed so don't try and tighten it on and hammer away on it too much because it won't happen that goes like that okay so there is the rear bearing set now we're back to our hole in this shaft and it has a pin that goes through it just two cotter keys on either side slides down through there and what it's doing is it's bringing this back and forth motion out from the center to this coupler and we don't really have a good name for it except it's a hydraulic piston part of one it gets another piece bolted to it but this pin you can see passes through that hole and that links this piece that rides out here to the pin on the inside got that that's very important because these pieces move fore and aft the whole thing is spinning including this but this can move fore and aft and it transfers that energy to this inside shaft in and out got it okay now so this piece is the critical piece this is the hydraulic valve there's two grooves cut in it one deeper than the other because they both have holes with passages that run up to this end you'll count six bolt holes here and four oil galleys so there is one oil galley coming forward right to there there's an op one on the opposite side of it 
and this deeper groove its oil galley is there and it comes out and sure enough it's back here and lower down so this groove has two oil galleys going to here and this groove has two oil galleys going to here so what's going to happen is this brass fitting is where the oil is injected into these grooves so it doesn't turn it rides up here on top and a hydraulic hose fits in right there that hose dumps its oil into the center groove see that hole right there so high pressure oil goes into the center groove the other two grooves are the returns so when the hydraulic oil comes in this groove it goes all the way around and so it ends up coming through that center groove there and it's blocked off because it's sitting right in the middle so what happens is you can move with the handle this part just enough to let that oil go into this channel or into the other channel that means whether you're moving this whole section backwards or forwards if you move this back you're going to move the whole thing backwards and the way that happens is it has a socket over here and it's just a friction fit of a handle that goes into it the handle extends through to the outside and it has this lever on it that's connected to your cable system which goes up to your helm and we have adjustable stops on it so we can correct for the limits of the propeller blades as they move in and out now to look at how this works a little bit more detail if i move it to this ring right that oil flows all the way around it hits this hole and the one on the other side it passes through here it comes out here so we're going to take this apart we're going to take the end of this piston off so think of our piston and this is our piston head and it actually gets bolted on there with those six bolts and it has four oil holes through it too two of them come back to this side that one right there oil flows out and then wraps around and is put onto this side of the piston the other holes pass through and supply oil to this side of the piston and once it's all bolted on when this piston head moves inside of this cylinder it's attached to this piece it's going to move as well so back to here again when this piece moves forward we want the whole thing to move forward and so we're dumping oil now into this galley that goes through that hole it goes forward to here it reverses back around and starts filling this side and pushing the whole thing that way but the oil over here has to go somewhere too because it's got a backside to it so it can't go anywhere so it goes back through this other hole here on this side goes back through its galley and there's the hole it comes through so it fills this aft galley here all the way around and look where our valve is see it's still seated forward but some of the oil goes around through that and into the rear groove cut in our brass the front groove is not being used at this time just the rear one and what it's doing is delivering oil over out down through that hole and all that does is going back to the tank but it's doing it by going into this inner ring where it just lubricates things and drops back into the tank below and when I say the tank below we're just talking about it, it dumps out into literally the tank so what happens when we move this valve forward the whole piston moves forward but it stops as soon as it catches up because what what happens is when it moves see it'll shut off its oil supply until you move the handle a little bit more and then it will catch up and it will shut off its oil supply so it moves forward only as you press the handle that literally it's catching up with itself you move the valve a little bit the cylinder catches up with the valve it stops moving until you do this a little bit more it works the same way the other direction this becomes the pressure path this becomes the tank path it comes back through here goes down through holes on this side boom Bob's your uncle so the piston is moving the pin is going through the shaft the shaft is moving the propeller blades are doing their thing everything's great let's just show you the rest of the parts so there's the head to our cylinder here and it's just bolted on there is a big bearing that gets heated up and pressed under there there's this retaining collar this is the front so it's threaded on properly remember reverse is threads on the rear section then we're outside the housing here this big coupler has a tapered shaft and a key on it and there's the tapered shaft and the keyway there and then it has its own retaining uh, ring that goes on 
and it's regular threaded too. The only one that's backwards is that one at the rear. Now it's just the housing. So there's your tank. It's got a cooling system in the bottom of it to keep the oil cool. It's just two copper pipes. So water flows in, goes down to the center of this one, to the outside, back, and out through this line. So we use a pump that turns on when we start our engine that feeds uh, coolant through this loop here. The bearings rest here and here. This is our hydraulic line returning to the uh, power steering pump. And this is a three quarter inch uh, hydraulic line. Understead actually kind of recommends even larger than that. We found that this works just fine. I think they're just being paranoid. That's the end plate that goes here. There are lip seals in both of these plates and they're not the same size. The hydraulic fluid comes in through here and it comes in through a fitting that can pivot easily and down to our brass ring because it just has to move back and forth a little bit but it travels over three inches. So this is Hunterstead's new design. They used to have some kind of a hydraulic fancy rig in here but then they went to a housing that was larger. Mine is the older housing but I just cut some steel and made it taller put a piece of acrylic in the top and that's nice because I can see what's going on down inside there. Dipstick, there's where the handle mounts onto the outside of it. Okay so our problem was this was press fit onto this and there were no bolts and that I'm going to tell you that did not have bolts when I got it. That may not be the truth but I'm sticking to that story. And I know somebody had messed in here because this piece was completely missing. We had to invent this brass piece uh, from sketchy drawings they had. Exhibit B, this sketchy drawing. We got this off the internet and built this from it. And you know, we were getting really picky about the, you know, how many thousands and all that. It doesn't really matter that much. It works pretty with a lot of slop in there actually. What is important is the clearance of this brass to this piece of the valve. You don't want all the oil just coming in and then shooting out because remember this piece is spinning and this piece is not. So I had this ground at a local machine shop and we bought and paid for a lathe by saving the price of not having to buy this part from Hunderstedt. Yep, you're looking at a $3,000 part if you had to buy it. So because these bolts weren't there, what happened was when the pressure got into this side of it, it built up and it blew this part away from there just enough to get oil through from the inside through here and then it shot out through the bolt holes. We just thought, yeah, that's kind of a weird return. But then this whole thing was confusing to us because it's cut like a gear. And it's like, why do they have a gear in here that doesn't interface with anything? So that's our excuse. And it would work in the other direction because when the oil is getting pumped in on this side, it's fine. It pushes that that direction. It doesn't matter because all it's doing is trying to relieve the oil from this side anyway. So that oil would just shoot out these holes too and they wouldn't have to bother coming back through the return galleys. So we will put it back together this time with bolts in the holes and I bet you it's going to work. Okay, so first step for the reassembly of the Hunterstead is to put the cylinder back on what you could consider the cylinder head. Now this is where we were having our issue. These are two pieces here and here. And because we didn't have any bolts in these bolt holes, which we do now, the hydraulic pressure could push this off of the cylinder just enough that it could leak by and go into the bolt holes and come out here, which we thought was lubrication. Little gasket sealer between the cylinder and the, uh, what we call this, the ring geared plate. O-ring back in its groove. Next thing is to slide the piston back into there and then bolt its end on on the other side. A little trouble getting the O-ring in, but some grease and some patience and you'll make it happen. This is a bolt hole. Yeah. You have a galley to the left of this bolt hole this galley is to the right of the bolt hole, so they will not, so they cannot when go you can see the galleys, you've got it on the right. You can see the galleys and all your bolt holes line up. Good engineering. By somebody. The O-ring between the two faces before you tighten down the bolts. Nice. So once your piston's assembled, just slide it onto the shaft, press it home, and the bolts go on the other end. 
gasket seal going in very carefully. Sneak into the kitchen for a quick bite. I don't know what's cooking, but bearings and a retainer ring. Ha! Look at this hammer. Didn't even need the pipe. Yeah, that was easy. Look, you can't already you can't turn it. Because it touches that cold it metal. It touches that cold metal. Blue uh, belt. Yep, blue. Finger in there. Okay. Made it special for it. So you gotta line those two things up. No, we're, we're not gonna be able to do a quarter <laughs> turn. <laughs> See that little notch in the ring? Our goal here is to move it over here so it lines up with that notch there. Uh, 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 uh. Stop. You're there. You were there. Perfect. Go on there. Ah, nice. Just a little solder to fill up that gap. Center pins next. Heat for some and cold for others. Now this is important. Line this hole up across because you don't want the key coming into this area. This is where the uh, valve is. Oh, that's nice. Oh, beautiful. Too far. Too even. far. Like putting together a turbine. Oh, that was too easy. Man, that's a nice fit. It's all the way down. Okay. Okay, the other side. Yeah, that's it. It's rock solid now. But that's normal. Yep. Got it. I'm here to boost your your, your get, it, get the squeeze. Get the squeeze. Coil distribution ring, hydraulic hose, and caps. Supposed to let this once once it starts to squeeze out. You're supposed to let it sit for two, for an hour and then, and then tighten, tighten it down. down again. And then let it sit for 24 hours. That sounds like some fluid. engineer wrote that manual. That's that they did that to, to cover the passes. Yeah. How are you doing, Tinker? Oh, you do not smell good today. What, have you been rolling in something dead? type socket dealy. Yeah, it's pushing the it tape, on. It's the tape. Oh yeah. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. What a fantastic piece Going of engineering work. Beautiful. One, two, three, up. Over. Slowly down with the knees. Yeah, that's a spot. Rotate the prop, prop so it's up. Yeah, so the keyway is up. Justin Romero, this is your time. Okay. Well, this would be the way to look at it. See it sitting up at that end? Right. Well, there's a, a whole lot of grease in that keyway. Not that much. There's old grease. I don't think it's sitting on the key in the aft end. Moving over there. Yeah, okay, but hit it back in the middle again. I think that did it. Because we rotated the bolts to make YouTubers happy. Oh my god. The things we do for other people. You going in? Yeah, three pumps, four. To be noted, the keyway on the aft end of this coupler has two holes through it. One is for a bolt to go into a quarter twenty so you can pop the key out. The other is a passage from the Zerk through the key, through the, uh, sh the outer 
shaft of the propeller and into that void between the outside and the inside shaft which articulates the variable pitch propellers back there. So if you pump enough grease in here it actually comes out the back end of the boat. And right there is where all this grease goes because it fills up this hub and that's where the actuator is that moves these propellers. And you can see down there there's a compression collar and a packing seal behind that. That's what keeps the water from coming back into the boat because that shaft is the one that actuates in and out. Now when the mounts down here were originally built in here we had all this set in place and bolted up and so that mount was built for the proper angle of this drive shaft and all that and uh, I've since ground down the back edge so it has a little bit more taper to it to get a little more correct but we are essentially letting the muff coupler there do the alignment for us and then checking it with a piece of paper so I got at least four thousandths of a gap there but if I move that paper forward it's sitting on the front edge so it's got support there so we're gonna go ahead and bolt it down and see what happens my guess is it's gonna be beautiful What's next? Hose? The hoses, drive shaft, the front, coolant. You want to do drive shaft or hoses? I'll get the drive shaft. I'm going to reach it from here. Okay. And here we go. Okay, now, now I think we're good. Because as long as the cable doesn't move, then when you move the prop, you actually engage the valve and it moves it back. Did I move it? Yeah. I moved the handle. Yeah. yeah. If, there, if the handle was locked, you wouldn't have been able to move it. So we need some resistance on the handle right. so that the valve engages, but it's not spinning either. I can't test that. Okay. I have to wait for that. water for that. I think it's going to be fine. Let me hook the water system up. We'll spin the prop. And I bet that's less force than the finger. So we're going to start the engine up. We're going to move it all the way to that side. We're going to shut the engine down. And you're going to tighten up the stop until it pulls the oil injection brass thing off. So they put it to yeah, neutral. Okay. Hopefully it moves the coupler, not the shaft, right? Yeah. There it goes. Right. Yeah, I see it moving. That's good. Going into gear. It's in gear. Oh yeah, it makes all the difference in the world. I think we got ourselves a boat. Now the question is, do you have a ticket to our launch festival, which will include a wonderful Caribbean dinner, some alcohol, pirates, pirate winches on stilts with whips, a pirate band. Come on out, it'll be fun. Get your tickets soon. We've sold about a third of them and we are six weeks out. There, we actually ran it long enough. The water temp came up to 180. We sailed away from the port of Catusa. No eyes were dry as we sailed away. <laughs> That's right. You can get in on the fun because we're finally getting ready to have the big launch party. Yeah. August 21st at the Port of Catusa, but you gotta have a ticket and it's gonna be fun. It's a big party and there's pirates and yeah, there's some cannons. <laughs> there's a pirate pledge. There's lots of food. There's drink. There's oh, there's even some girl pirate on stilts with a whip. Oh my gosh, I don't know what to think, but you gotta hurry up and get reservations because you know what? 
If you snooze, you lose. So hurry on over to the SV Seeker website and you'll find a link that'll take you over to where you can get your tickets. Don't be late or else you won't get to be there. <laughs> yep, that's right. And, you know, me and my friends, we're going to be sailing away from the port of Catoosa. And I guess we'll take Doug with us. Ha, ha, ha.